Hello, my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And today, I want to talk about several experiences I had while staying in Germany. And all these experiences were with one particular Norse deity. What's interesting is it's not a deity I expected to really connect to while I was out in Germany. I expected to maybe connect with Odin, maybe Thor, or maybe just ancestral connections, or maybe Landvetir connections while I was out there. And that deity that I want to continue the conversation on today is the Norse god Baldr. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out my Norse god Baldr video, um, which I did in collaboration with Gialdir and his music around Baldr, um, mostly because of the scenery I was able to capture on that beautiful day, which is a very key component to the reason this video exists. So that video I recorded at Nymphenburg Palace in Munich, and it was one of the most beautifully shot videos I feel I've ever made just because of the beautiful day and just really the ambience of that place in general. It felt like a place that the golden sun would be really happy with as far as a, a video about him. And at the end of the video, I did actually go to a temple of Apollo that was there at Nymphenburg Palace um, and leave an offering for Baldur as well. I also recommend checking out that video if you want the historical facts about Baldur, what we know. This video is not about that. This video is about my experiences, which is the backbone of what this channel really is, is sharing my experiences through Norse paganism. And so when something happens, I want to share it with you. It's also a way for me to kind of work out my own feelings when it comes to things in this faith, because it really was a shock to me that I go all the way around the world to Germany, to a place I thought I was going to have these intense connections with, you know, with Odin or Thor, with the ancestors, and I got connected with Baldur a deity I never thought I actually would connect with. I mean, I went to an Odin statue, you know, I, I thought I was gonna have this explosive Odin moment. And while it was a pleasant experience and it was a pleasant series of videos around the Odin Week videos, and ultimately didn't give me an explosive connection, which overall I would say while I was traveling, while I was there and exploring the old country, so to speak, I would say I didn't have really any explosive experiences. But I will say that I had a joyous experience with Baldur, and that's something that I feel like a lot of us need in this day and age. I mean, almost every single conversation I've had with somebody finally linking up after being gone for so long has been about the state of the world we live in. It's pretty harsh. I mean, this is a really weird and difficult time to live. I feel like everyone has a dozen different theories about why everything is happening right now, why our lives are so chaotic, why everything just seems to be so confusing. And for those dozen theories, there's two dozen answers of how we get out of this problem. And ultimately, there is no one right answer. This is really complicated. So what we need now in this day and age, more than anything, is a way to find joy. And this is something, of course, I talked about in, you know, how to find happiness in a world of confusion, where I was one of the last videos I filmed in Munich, where I just walked around on a beautiful day and kind of shared with you my thoughts on how to find joy and how to ha find happiness in particular in this faith. So that's actually part of the saga of Baldur and experiences I had with him. In total, I had three Baldur experiences while in Germany, and that's really what I want to share with you in this video, while of course putting footage from those experiences, some of which I haven't even shared that footage at all. So the first Baldur experience actually comes in the form of a video. So while filming that video and doing the research about Baldur, again, I didn't really know that much about Baldur going into it, and I left that experience working with Jonathan from Gialdir and making that video, I felt like I understood Baldur even more. Because just like I said in that video, most of what we know historically and from the mythology is that he is this, you know, death deity in the sense that that's all there is about him. Everything that references Baldur in the prose and poetic Edda is genuinely about his death. But if you actually look at what kind of deity he was, he was a deity of light, a deity of wisdom, a deity of joy. And so reading those things and going outside on a beautiful day at Nymphenburg Palace, that's what I connected with. I didn't connect with the fact that he was going to die eventually. We're all going to die eventually. I mean, that's one of the only truths about life is that one day you'll be born and one day you're going to die. And so Baldur kind of fits that truth as well. But what about as an actual practice? What, is a, what about a deity? What can we learn from him? And I really do think that joy is something we can learn. We always look at Odin as this sour looking deity, losing his eye, hanging from the world tree, pierced by his own spear, always looking for a way to end Ragnarok. But he was so joyous with Baldur. He cared so much about Baldur. Even this cranky one-eyed old man loved this son so much. And so I really do think that, you know, what we can learn from Baldur is really how to seek joy and enjoy life. 
life always has darkness. I mean, this is again something I talked about and how to how to find happiness in this world of confusion is that life genuinely always has something going on. I mean, really think about the first 50 years of the 1900s. You had World War One, World War Two, and the Great Depression, and that affected varying degrees of people that lived around the world. You know, so much chaos, so much war, so much death, so much darkness. And so that was a horrible time to be alive. But you know, great people came from that time. And you know, people that really, you know, triumphed and became better versions of themselves. That's really what we should look at the first part of the century of the 2000 era is yes, we're going through a really hard time right now, but eventually it will end. And that's something that only Balder could teach me is yes, there's an inevitability to life kind of sucking, but there is joy in life as well. And so in this dark, dingy religion that is Norse paganism that can sometimes take way too serious of a note, I really do that feel like Balder is that, is that happiness that a lot of us really need and a lot of us are seeking. Look at this right here. So this is something that made me really connect with Balder is beautiful days, is beautiful clouds. Because every time I've had a Balder experience, this is tied to it somehow. When I was at the Nymphenburg Palace filming the first time, there was beautiful clouds, beautiful sun, and it made me feel so joyous. And in the second time I met Balder, the second Balder experience is when I filmed that um, video on how to find happiness. Um, and again, this was a day that was like any other. It was not a day that I planned on filming. I planned it on just taking some notes. And then I ended up having this wonderful, just happy day where I sat on a park bench, drank my cup of coffee in the middle of Munich, watching these beautiful clouds roll by. And then I met that piano player and found his music that really was the backbone of that entire video was his music playing in the background. I mean, I, I sat there for like an hour just listening to the piano play. And now whenever I think about Balder, I hear that piano music or I hear the music that um, Jonathan from Gyaldir made as well. Beautiful music, beautiful days. All of these things are tied to Balder, the god of light. One small thing I want to do uh, in the middle of this video is thank the wonderful musicians that I got to work with when working with Balder, which again seems to be something that he's tied to. Um, so Gialder, um, Jonathan, thank you so much. It was a pleasure working on that video with you, brother. And um, again, I feel like we made a really beautiful honoring of Balder that day, and I'm so proud of it. Um, and I hope we get to work together in the future again. Um, and to the piano player that I was able to record on that, uh, on that one of my last days there and whose music graces the presence of one of my videos. Thank you so much. And to the audience out here, I was actually able to track him down again. And this is an amazing story to me because it was so perfect and was so small is that on one of my last days when I was saying my goodbyes to a lot of the people I had met, um, like the coffee shop I was going to, I said goodbye to him, left him a really good tip, uh, went to this donut place that uh, I had been going to, talked to that guy, I actually told him about the channel. So if he's watching this, hello. Um, and then also I was going back to the subway station when all of a sudden I heard the piano music once again. I was going down the escalator and I heard it. I was, I was like, I knew it was him. And so I could finally give him a little bit more money, but also maybe find out more about him. Um, but again, he seems to be very private with his playing. You know, he was just playing. He has like, do not disturb signs on there. What I did was just leave him a really good tip. And I actually did get one of his CDs as well. So I put what information I know about him down below. Um, but it was just such a magical moment. I mean, I literally went down the escalator, heard it, ran back up um, and found him and was just so happy. And it was just such a brief moment. But it was, it brought me so much joy to be able to encounter this lone piano player in a city of like 6 million people once again. Um, and it really felt like it, it, it came full circle and it capitulated this experience. Um, so again, that all these things just feel like they're tied to this God of joy, this God of light um, that I was able to experience while in Germany. My final Balder experience came the very final day that I had in Germany and I had to decide what to do. Was I just going to be sitting at home depressed that I had to leave? Or was I going to do something with my day? So I, I decided that I was going to go to Nymphenburg Palace one last time to really just soak it all in before I had to leave. Now this day was cold and rainy, so much so that we actually had to go buy an umbrella because we didn't expect it. And it was downpouring rain at one point uh, while actually getting out there. And as soon as we got to the Nymphenburg Palace area, it was like the skies completely parted only around Nymphenburg Palace. It was almost a perfect circle around the building. And I mean, to me, that was a gift from Balder in a way. And now you might not see it as that, but for me, it was one last perfect Bavarian blue sky day. And that's something that has stayed in my mind since I have left, is that perfect day right there at Nymphenburg Palace. And I saw it as a gift from Balder because it was a gift of beauty at a place that I filmed about Balder. And it, 
it was what I needed in that moment because I was not in a good place. I mean, it was literally raining, cloudy, and depressing on a day I was depressed to leave. And then all of a sudden going there, having beauty come back, and for me to have such a wonderful experience there that last day, that is to me what religion is, is I can't really explain it. Again, maybe there was just a weird, you know, weather pattern that day, whatever. But for me in that moment, I saw beauty once again and I needed it. And that's really all I need in this religion. I don't need Balder to come down from the heavens and say, Jacob, I give you this beautiful day. I don't need that. And that's not how religion works. How religion works is finding ourselves at the right place in the right time and for us to find meaning in those moments as well. The last thing that happened that day is I was able to actually go to one more castle that once again, that circle in the clouds seemed to follow us as we went to that castle as well. And I got to experience one last castle and one last beautiful day all together. And I thank Balder for that moment. And that it, it has stayed in my heart. Balder to me is right here. That's where I feel that joy, that happiness. Um, even in the darkness, in the darkest part of the world, and when life feels more confusing, that's where Balder comes in, and he gives you just a little bit of joy to keep you fighting. I feel like it really has been a while where I've had one of these catch-up videos as far as my own spiritual experiences. I've been really focused on the mythology, reading you the facts, because I think that is so important to share what we know really historically and then giving that to you so you can make your own assumptions and you can form your own practice around that knowledge. So this video, it feels weird for me to make because it, you know it feels selfish to sit here and just talk about my experiences. But I really hope that talking about these experiences bring more people to realize that they need to start following Balder, so to speak. Yes, Odin is great, Thor is great, but in this day and age, with what's going on in the world right now, what we need is joy. What we need is a reason to keep going. For me, the God that's gonna give that to you, for the God that's gonna give you beautiful days, which is what you need right now, that's Balder. And I thank Balder so much for the beauty on this very day as well. Again, look at this. That's wild. The one day I decide it's been hazy and like kind of just like gross and hot, extra hot here in Kentucky. And then the day I come out to decide to talk about Balder, it's beautiful again. And so to me, there's something there. And this is again, not something that we know historically. We don't know what Balder worship would have been like. Now, something like Beyond the North Wind infers that Apollo was very similar to Balder and Apollo worship and Balder worship would have been very similar. But really we don't know if Balder was worshiped as a deity so really all we can do is share our own experiences now and that is what i'm doing with you here on the wisdom of odin is sharing with you what i have experienced with the god of light the son of odin Balder. and did i need to give a massive offering to do that no i gave him a little tiny bottle of wine in that uh norse gods Balder video and i don't even think that's really what did it it was really just acknowledging the beauty of this world and that is what has made me connected to him and i couldn't be more grateful for that so truly from the bottom of my heart i know how confusing this world is i'm living it too and it seems like everyone i talk with is just so confused and and just so full of so much anxiety now and it really is haunting me because i don't know what the answer is and i don't know if anyone really knows what the answer is there will come a time when joy enters our world fully once again. There will come a time that life is less confusing. I'm sure of that because it always happens. Humanity has gone through many dark times and we always come out better for it. And I think we're going through that moment right now where it's going to be hard. But until that time when life becomes a little bit easier, I hope that gods like Balder can help you along your journey. And I really do think that if, if you're struggling right now, Balder would be a really great deity to connect with, to connect you with the joy and beauty in life once again. So thank you very much. And until the hall, Skull.